So the other day, a package came in the mail. Inside was a unicorn. A tube that I've been looking for for a very long time. And finally, a pair of them surfaced. I made a trade for an equally obscure unicorn-like tube. And, uh, well, here it is. What is it? It's a Rogers Atatron. The type number is 6047, Rogers of Canada. This is very likely a prototype tube. It appears to be number 436, serialized. I don't know what this other number means here. 344XA3446, I don't know. Anyway, this is a complete full adder in one tube. Binary adder. That is A plus B plus carry in. And the outputs are the sum and carry out. Now, normally in a tube computer, you would need several tubes to do each bit of a full adder. But a very clever man, Dr. Yusuf Cates, up in Canada, he was at the University of Toronto, invented this. And in 1950 released it. He, uh, he did spend some time at Rogers and probably had some connections and so he did get Rogers interested in this tube, in his design rather, and so Rogers made some prototypes. Now what this thing is, it's a beam switching tube. Now you can see along the outside there are eight cylinder type uh, electrodes. They're called collector electrodes. Inside, and it's very difficult to see, we probably won't be able to see it, but uh, eh, sort of sort of in there, there are other electrodes that work as essentially sort of like grids, but are actually deflection anodes, deflection electrodes rather. How this works is very clever. It uh, There's a, a standard filament in the center, Come on, focus you. And you can actually see it there. I think it's pins 4 and 5, like, like most good tubes. And uh, it would shoot out this electron beam. And depending on how those inner control electrodes were essentially energized, it would uh, the beams would fall onto these collector electrodes. Now, if you look up here, a little hard to see, you can see that these collector electrodes are interconnected in all sorts of interesting ways. And these interconnections, working with the control electrodes in the inside, essentially do a binary function, and that is a full adder. Now, what's interesting about this device is it really could have changed computing for a while. Now, it turned into just to be a dead end. Because realize, if you can do a full adder in a standard little 9-pin tube, just think of the interesting things you could do. You could do all sorts of logic functions. Now, they actually made these. This apparently is 436. You can see the serial there. I don't know what XA3446 means. It's some lab thing. They apparently did make prototypes. Whether or not they actually ever made production units is, well, no one's ever seen one. And uh, apparently Amperex was trying to market these for a while, and no one's seen one of those either. Uh, apparently they did actually get put into a very interesting machine, and that is Birdie the Brain. Now, Birdie the Brain was shown in 1950 at a Canadian computing show. And Birdie the Brain was essentially a purpose-built computer that played tic-tac-toe. Now, what's interesting is it's a contender for the earliest or perhaps first computer game. That's arguable, but it's interesting. I don't know specifics about Birdie the Brain, like how it was actually laid out. But apparently, it used Datatrons. Whether or not anything else did, who knows. It was intended for a while to be used in a University of Toronto machine, but apparently it never made it. 
Now, speaking of never made it, apparently, like I said, these things never really got too far out of the lab. There were some issues with patents and such like that, that even though these tubes were uh, basically being built and run in, in, in 1950 in this Birdie the Brain machine, there was all sorts of legal legal garbage going on, and it wasn't until 1957, I believe, that all the patented uh, patents were cleared and this, that, and the other thing, so they could actually be produced. Well, you know, by 1957, 1957, transistors were pretty much uh, moving in. The yeah, there were still tube computers, but the writing was on the wall for tube, tubes and computers. So the Atatron here could have made a big deal had it not been tied up in legal junk, but unfortunately it was just too late. Now you can actually find a data sheet online. This thing was registered. It's type 6047. And if you go online, I believe it might be a Polish site that has the uh, origi original data sheet. And uh, it would be neat to get this thing working. The getter looks good. I haven't actually looked at the filament to see, see if it's uh, good. But yeah, let's face it, most of the time the filaments are on, on these things are good. It'd be interesting to power this thing up and see what happens. Now, unfortunately, there's not much I can do with a full adder. I can add A plus B and carry in and see what comes out of sum and carry out. Because, well, we only know of one other person that has a, a, an Atatron. And he was the man that I, uh, I traded this for. He had actually found two. And, like I said, I traded a, a, a equally obscure, equally obscure weird unicorn-like tube for this. And I think we're both happy. Um, so, yeah, the chances of ever, me, ever making more than a one-bit adder... Pretty slim. Unless someone finds some Atatrons, yeah, I don't think it's going to happen. Anyway, interesting device. Interesting device. It it Had it been actually released and developed further, it really could have made a difference. Uh, now, yeah, for a few years, because let's face it, transistors were going to win anyway, weren't they? But, you know, just think, if this is a full adder, you could just kind of arrange different electrodes, uh, maybe give it more pins, give it more electrodes. You could make multiplexers. You could make different selectors. You could make, uh, uh, you know, uh, come on, focus you. There we go. You can make all sorts of interesting logic gates. Somewhat complex logic systems. And it's interesting to see how far you could actually go. When, make, when, when designing with this beam-forming technology. But alas, only the Atatron came to be. All right, well, I'm very happy that I got this tube. The, the, uh, the label is very loose, so I have to treat it very gingerly. You can see it's uh, Electronic Tube Division, something Radio Manufacturing Corp. It's, it is Rogers. You can see Rogers there. Um... Leoside, Ontario. Looks like Leoside, Ontario. I'm not terribly familiar with Rogers, so um, I'll have to do a little more research on that. But neat thing. One of these days, <laughs> another project, I will actually power this up and see if I can add a couple of numbers. Um, in the data sheet, I believe it says that they call this a high-speed device, and it could be, because you could switch beams pretty quickly. You know, you think about the Burroughs beam switchers and various things like that. You know, those things could count reasonably fast. Um, so, yeah, it's it's if you had eight of these things or ten of these things to make a an adder, you could probably add, well... For the time, for for the for the mid fifties, you could probably add a couple of binary numbers relatively quickly. So, yep, that's it. It's got a got an Atatron. I'm extremely happy about it. Um, I'm going to treat it very well. It's not much I can do with it. It's a bit of a wall hanger, I guess. But uh, interesting, interesting dead end technology. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like, maybe share, maybe subscribe. 
leave a comment. Hey, if you know anything uh, more about these Adatrons, or hey, if you've got an Adatron, let me know. We can we can put them together and count or add numbers rather, not count, add numbers. All right. Hope you enjoyed. Talk to you later. Bye now.